Uh, this season obviously begins with this very big change of the, the prison being introduced. What can you say about bringing that in and what that sort of adds to the, these characters and the situation they're trapped in? When you think about a prison, it's not a place that you would look at as refuge. Um, it's a place you want to stay out of, but because of the bars, if you can make it somewhat safe, you can keep the zombies out. Uh, but it's, it's, it's never going to quite replace the farm. Daryl seems like a character who might have some familiarity with the prison. Uh, would that be safe to say? Why would you say such things? <laughs> um, there, there is a couple of lines uh, that Daryl has in the prison where he's, he definitely doesn't want to sleep in a cage, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's, we've thought about backstories. Maybe he did some time in juvie. I know his big brother did some time in juvie. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but again, like, like Gail said, it's... Um, it's a place where we can sleep at night. It's like Club Med to us, you know, it's awesome. So, uh, yeah, we're happy to be in the prison when, the, the problem is other people want the prison too. So. Right, right. Um, Andrew talked about the fact that Daryl has almost kind of become like the, the wingman this season to him and sort of an important, you know, person you can count on. Uh, you know, is that interesting to play up that dynamic? You know, it is. I mean, you know, I remember season one and season two, there was sort of this unwritten thing that Shane and, Rick and Daryl were doing like when there was decisions and things happened that the looks went in this weird sort of triangle and we all spoke about it um, you know the thing with with Daryl is he doesn't there's no desire to lead this group in any way you know he it's not what he wants to do he it, it when things happen and he needs to take charge he takes charge right away and he's very efficient at it but um, as far as the Shane Rick thing. There's none of that going on with Daryl, and he's very happy to be part of a group at all. To mm -hmm. be honest. So. Now you're bringing in a couple of big characters this season with Michonne and the Governor, and you talk about introducing them and uh, what's it like bouncing them off your characters. Well, you know, two fan favorites in the comic books are are the Governor yeah. and uh, David Morrissey, another British actor, is is bringing him to life, and uh, and Michonne, who's the kick-ass woman. Uh, warrior with a katana sword who wields it better than perhaps any guy could right. uh, with her two zombie pets mm -hmm. and um, you know that's played by Denai Guerrera so um, so the dynamic they bring is that other than than Daryl and Merle perhaps we haven't seen someone who has uh, who's so who's so primed to thrive mm. in this new world order and as it turns out both the governor and Michonne are able to thrive in two completely different ways. And um, you mentioned Merle, uh, Merle coming back. Uh, what's that going to be like for Daryl, who so much has changed for him in this interim without his brother around? Well, you know, I would imagine being Daryl and having a big brother like Merle, there were certain things that uh, he didn't totally appreciate. You know, I've, I've always tried to play it like I didn't want to be a, a racist or take drugs or be so aggressive like him. I'm sort of the quiet younger brother, but um, without that influence around, he's sort of developing uh, his personality maybe for the first time. And, and he's around these people that he would never have hung out with if this didn't go down. But I think the feeling of value is something that's very important to Daryl. And I, I think he would do anything to keep these people alive. Um, Merle coming back in, there's toes being stepped on and uh, you know, can we all just get along? There's a little bit of that, um, which is expected. Uh, but I think he, also Daryl's always looking for Merle. Merle's always looking for Daryl. So there's a bit of, ah, be nice. You know, so there's a whole bunch of things going on. Uh, on a show that has a lot of great creative ideas for zombies, I have to say a personal favorite is in the season premiere, uh, Riot Gear Zombies. <laughs> is it fun for you guys trying to come up with those new ideas and going, all right, this is a fun little twist on what we've done? You know, it's, it, it is fun uh, to, to up the ante. And we have what we call the off-season right. uh, when we're not shooting uh, for Greg Nicotero and his fantastic two-time Emmy award-winning team at KNBFX to dream up something not only, you know, even more fantastic and this season we also have animatronics and puppeted heads and things like that that we haven't had in the past, um, but also because our group of survivors have learned to deal with the threat now, we need to up the ante for them. So people, you know, zombies in riot gear are a little harder to dispatch for them. Yeah. For, yeah, I was going to say, for you as an actor, when you go to the set and you see what they've come up with, what's it like for you to go, all right, this is what we're dealing with today? You know, the, the, thing, the thing about how Greg and his team do the zombies is it, it's not 
just, uh, you know, you see this sick, dying, lost person behind the monster, which is the most fascinating part uh, about it for me. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think actually I can say that I just did my favorite Daryl Kill. I have to say it was definitely my favorite, I think. I can't tell you what it is, and I know that's a huge tease, but I think I just upped my own little Daryl Annie with the zombie kill.